how do we change the perception of what the bar is supposed to be? Because I feel like, like I'm rambling, but like having, let's say for instance, let's having Skrillex play your song is amazing. Yeah, sick. But here's when we put things in perspective. If you don't grab that clip and put it up, nobody knows. That's one thing. But if you grab that clip and put it up, your network knows. It's kind of like a one in a million chance that you put that clip up and it just goes worldwide. Like, I feel like it's such a small percentage. And then the other side of that is like the people in the crowd don't know that that's your song. So how much of a accolade is that? Like, what does it do for the community? It doesn't, in my opinion, I'm saying this long story short, it doesn't do shit. Like, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, I'm dancing around it, but like, yo, it doesn't do shit. I understand the hype of it. I understand the reasoning that people think that it's an amazing thing. I totally get it. But I feel like what's holding Mumatone back and what's making Mumatone pretty much whack to me is having that as like the best thing that could possibly happen to you. Yeah, you know, I've I've been there, but we're talking like 2013, 2014, right? And it's, I was thinking about it recently with some conversations we had off camera and I'm just like, it's crazy that that's still kind of the bar and, and still the thing that people are chasing in a way. But like not to discredit that because it's it's awesome. Like celebrate that. One of these big name DJs plays you on a grand festival stage and supports your music. Somebody records it in the crowd. Fucking celebrate it. You deserve to celebrate. That's That's awesome. That's a win. But that shouldn't be it. Right? Because at the end of the day... You don't have like a an AI tool, 1001 track list, like glaring on the screens of this fucking $20 million LCD screen, like what artist song is being played right now. They exactly. Nobody in the crowd gives a shit. <laughs> like nobody no. cares and nobody knows. And like the music nerds will maybe dig a little deeper. For sure. And they'll maybe like... Those are the guys in the YouTube find comments. I this 1001 track list for this DJ from this date. I need to know what song that is. But like, I feel like that's such a small percentage. I, I don't feel like that's... It's not enough. That's, that's not like... It's not enough. If there's 5,000 people in the crowd, maybe 150 people are going to do that? Maybe. Maybe. And that's That's like... Really, really pushing. Yeah, that's that's very generous. That's very, very generous. generous. And and like again, I don't want people to get it twisted. Exactly, because I'm not saying this to like discourage people. Yeah. I'm saying it because like I feel like people are stopping once they achieve that. Like, all right, cool. I got this person to play my song. I don't even think they're it. stopping. It's just they're not stopping. It's just what's what's next. There's there's no opportunity past that. That's For sure. the problem. For sure. Like. DJ X isn't going to call you the next day and be like, bro, <laughs> I played your track last night. And, and if he is, he's calling you to produce for him. Yeah. Ghost produce for him. And that'd be the end of you also. Because that's that's the other route. That's the other route. The other route. You When you end up with, with these guys playing your songs, they start reeling you in the hey come to the studio hey you got any more demos hey produce this for me yeah i've heard those stories too and again there's nothing wrong with ghost producing but there's the that there's that part where it's like i've seen the guys who wanted to be an artist and end up ghost producing and then get mad that the other artist was taking the credit and it's like but you signed up to be a ghost producer mm-hmm so there's that line where it's like, do you really want to do that? Because it's such a small percentage of the amount of people who've like gone on from ghost producers. And I won't name like everybody like, because I like, you know, there's some people I'm sure the general pu public doesn't know. Like maybe people in the scene know and I know certain things. Like, but like, like, yeah, not to name drop, but like it that has proven effective for a very small population of people like making Mubatone or like, you okay, know, let's, producing let's do this in general. Major, very slim. Let's go. Let's right? Major La Laser is the perfect example. <laughs> Major Laser, we all know Diplo wasn't producing all that music. We yeah. all know that. That's yeah. you know he knows it. Everybody's acknowledging. Yeah. There's so many mad decent guys who were producing a lot of that music up until they got with Ape Drums, and right. Ape Drums 
like revamped that whole fucking style of Major Lazer. The sound, it's perfect. Like the guy is awesome. an amazing yeah. fucking producer. Props. Amazing fucking Props. producer. But what are the chances <laughs> that Joe, whatever, DJ, whatever from Miami <laughs> or whatever is going to end up being that guy? You know, like right, right. it's such a small chance. And I feel like so many people hold on to that idea and that like, oh, I, if I get that cosign, you know, like I've seen that cosign just not do anything for so many people. Yeah. Like it's, it's limited in what it can do for you. Like, what are you going to put that on your fucking press kit? <laughs> I mean, remember when the blogs wanted to see, well, where's your song place on the hype machine? And you know, I like, remember that. like yeah. all that shit. But like, that shit is all dead now. It is. So but that's what I'm like, saying. It used to mean right. something. It used to be like that. Okay. I can screenshot hype machine being number one or top 10. And that would give me credibility to even be on the show or talk to this person and blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, okay, we've evolved so much that it's like, if you're not like TikTok famous, you're not fucking IG famous, Twitter famous, like, dude, you're holding on to a dream that's never going to happen. Like the bar is so low. And I think that that's what fucked up Moomatone. You know, mm. like I hate saying Moomatone is whack because it's true, you know, like, and it, it's shitty to say, but it's whack because all the guys that left that were supposed to be, you know, pushing the movement, just fucking turned their back. Whether it's leaving music altogether or switching genres and trying to play it like they were doing it because they wanted I mean, to, yeah. as opposed to like, yo, nobody wanted to book you and you couldn't stick it out. Right, exactly. You know, like you weren't sticking it out. You weren't putting out the music that you wanted to put it out. You just started playing the game. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem too. That left me by myself as fucking Ricky Vaughn holding the fucking flag, <laughs> flying to Mexico, putting out tons of EPs and songs by myself. Yeah. Like absolutely by myself. Nobody there. Like, nobody there. Like, obviously, all the kids who are, who are doing it now, they seen that. You know, like, I get the DMs. I get the messages. Like, they saw it. They saw what I was doing. And I was paving the way and helping to try to open doors and fucking create music to keep the movie tone going. But, like, everybody left. And it's not because the music was whack. Because when they left, all those chart-topping songs, the fucking Justin Bieber songs, the Skrillex, the Jack Hughes songs, the fucking... Oh, man, um, don't even. Don't even. The, all the Drake songs. Like... <laughs> Drake went on a Mumatone run. Where where was everybody? Where was everybody to say, hey, that's Mumatone? Hey, that is this sound. Like where, you know it's where'd crazy. It go? I I remember me? I remember back, like way back to a conversation I had with Marcus Dowling in a club in DC. And he we were having a conversation. I just remember him stressing the importance of this sound and the fact that it's going to be a mainstream sound period and this is like 2014 2015 maybe even earlier and i didn't think of it like that because we were just like trying to get the fucking make the dopest bangers with the craziest drops and like for sure. Hope that one of the bigger movement tone acts are gonna play your track because that that's yes, that was where that's was. where the bar was. Yep. But then when when that transition happened and like the that Moomatone sound really entered full charge into mainstream, it was like nobody was waving that flag because nobody was waving that flag. Yep. Right? So yep. it's just like it just became pop. It became Moombatone pop. Right? And it's it's still what it is. That that has that's still like a mainstream sound now. Yes. You go into a fucking Forever Twenty One tomorrow. You you'll, oh, hear, you'll some hear it. Moon you'll hear it. But like nobody's... it won't be Moombaton. The essence, the vibe, the drops, the samples. But it's all it's inspired. It's all clearly inspired. It's all I clearly mean, dude, inspired. It, and like like let's take it back even further. Like to the fact that Moombaton is influenced from dembo and reggaeton and all that stuff. Like it, it goes on, but at the end of the day, I feel like that when when Mumbaton, when that mainstream sound had its shine, it was more representative in sounding like Mumbaton than reggaeton. It's very for sure. different. No, for sure. Very I mean, different. You hear it. You, you right. You heard it in right. Bad Bunny's music in the past five years. Right. 